What's up, homies? It's your boy Luke. Today we're doing a design process video. I have no idea how this video is going to go. I think it's going to be great. Come check it out. So today we're working on a flyer, punk rock flyer, for one of my bands Foil. Foil, check it out. Amazing artwork by the homie Shane Donaldson. He is a legend. Trent Franks printed these shirts, also a legend. Start off with these logos. Love the foil logo that Shane did. Um, so I threw it up at the top. All big styles, got biomass on there, got the local San Luis Obispo band Jovi and Queen on the bill and chose a nice brown background. I'm doing a lot of earth tone color choices lately. I just like earth tones. What can I say? I wanted to bring something into the background to make it a little bit more interesting. Hunting for a background image, I went through some of my favorite stock photo websites. We're doing a monkey. Because the homie Spencer kind of looks like a crazy monkey when he's singing. So. Picked up this monkey, threw him in there, flipped him around. The monkey wasn't going to be filled in very easily, so I made a second layer and used the brush tool to just paint a white background behind the transparent monkey outline. Sometimes it's easier than like filling and removing the outlines to something. Um, it's just my method sometimes. There's a million ways to do stuff in Photoshop most of the time. And yeah, so I kind of got a little OCD filling in all the details on this monkey man. Most of the time I like to just start with the composition first, figure out the colors later, and just do clean black and white to make sure everything's fit. And on this flyer, I ended up pushing a bunch of the text to the right hand side which allowed me to put a big visual element on the left being this monkey man. So now I decided to spice up the background a little bit. Right here you can see I found, I don't even know what this is a picture of, some sort of like plant material. I have no idea what I'm looking at. But I, I, I had a feeling looking at it that it would make a good textured background. So what I'm doing now using the most important filter in Photoshop for doing punk graphics and that's the stamp filter. Quick note, first to use the stamp filter properly you want to convert your image to a smart object. Smart object allows you to alter the parameters of a certain filter or effect or process that you've put on a particular image so it's all reversible. You can, you can turn these filters on and off. It's not like when you're just working in strictly rasterized layers where your, your changes are permanent, roughly. Smart Objects allows you to change your mind, which is extremely helpful, and I found out about that feature way too late in my graphic design endeavors. Anyways, stamp filter, rules, I'm gonna give you that old school photocopy kind of grungy look that all the kids are just, they're just eating it up these days. Right here, I didn't like how the image was balanced between the, the light and dark at first, the background image. So I went into my smart filters and changed it after I'd already put it in the background of design to make it not so dark. I wanted the monkey, gorilla, whatever the hell this is, to be kind of the, the focal point, along with the band logos, of course. Once I got that in a place I liked, I started to build my overlays on top of it. Overlays are what I use a lot of the time to give texture and kind of a worn-in feel to my images. I use these a lot on my punk and metal flyers. Um, just give it that kind of old vintage feel. I tend to use a Xerox image of like, I'll just show you. 
I'll just show you. So right here I am copy pasting these layers from this other design, the Santa Cruz design, onto my new project. I do that all the time. I swear for the last like five flyers I've done, I've just used the same overlays and it works. Sometimes you just tweak the blending option and you can get a lot of different effects out of these overlays. So right now, got some basic overlays going, it looks a little worn in, a little faded. But now I'm going to work on the bottom text, all the details for the show, using the good old Aerial Black. You really can't go wrong with Aerial Black when it comes to punk flyer designs. Yes, it's overdone. Yes, it still looks good a lot of the time, especially if you stretch it, squish it, make it weird looking. Um, so right here, I'm starting to warp the text I'm using. So I converted all the text right there into one smart object. I'm going to applying Gaussian blur, displace, unsharp mask. Those are the three tickets to victory. Actually, I think on this one I might have just done displace. Sometimes that's, that's enough if you don't have room for text to get kind of blown up fully. And looks pretty good. So now I've got the primary composition elements, text, all laid out, spaced where I like it for the most part. I'm going to go in now and do some fine detailing. For my process, most of the time, this means adjusting your overlays, adjusting your blending options with those overlays, and also adjusting the overall color, color palette and color balance within the design. So on this one, I am using the darken blending option on a solid color layer I created, and this allows me to change all of the white on the image to whatever color I choose on that layer. I'm adjusting the colors. I got pretty hung up on this this lavender fill for all the white lighter parts. It kind of looks cool. I still think it kind of looks cool. I feel like I should have gone with it. It was kind of spicy. But I ended up going with Just like a freaking yellowish beige. Keep it simple sometimes. Don't know, I need to overcomplicate everything. And I think it worked out. It's pretty crispy. So now, I like where it's at. I can live with this. I don't completely hate it. You know what? In fact, I like this one. So I'm going to export it. Lately, my export settings have been primarily just save for web. I go to file, save, save for web. And I have a JPEG preset that's pretty much the stock preset, but then what I do is adjust the size for Instagram, because most of these flyers just get posted on Instagram, reposted on stories, whatever. I make them huge. I'm designed all of my flyers at 4,000 by 5,000 pixels. 4 by 5 is the Instagram biggest vertical ratio you can post as just a regular image post. And Instagram resolution, I set the width at 1080 and then it automatically figures out the height of the image. But 1080 is the proper size for Instagram at least right now, January 2023. And exporting at that size allows you to have your image uncompressed when you upload it to Instagram, which is extremely helpful if you've ever tried uploading larger art files to Instagram 
You'll notice that it compresses them and sometimes you get weird compression artifacts on some of the details of your image. So this is extremely helpful because it keeps everything crispy clean. So here we are, exported, and that is one more silly punk flyer in the books. Thanks for tuning in everybody. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, drop a comment, ring that notification bell. We're YouTubing now, baby. Let me know what other sorts of freaking videos you want to see out of this guy. I don't know what I'm doing, but we're, we're freaking going in. It's 2023. Here we are. Love you.